Hi there and welcome to our brand new course in which we are going to talk about Bash for Bioinformatics. So in this course, I am going to get you through the Ubuntu or Linux environment and how to use this operating system. Just like our previous tutorials was on Windows, this tutorial is totally on Linux operating system. So basically the Linux and Ubuntu system, Linux uh, you may know as an operating system, Ubuntu is a branch of Linux that we install in our operating system. So I am using Ubuntu right now. You can easily install this on your laptops. It requires low RAM and uh, low memory storage as well, but you can get most efficient performance from Ubuntu environment and Linux operating system as well. So I'm not going to get you through what is Linux and uh, this kind of stuff. But uh, first, uh, first introduction video will be on why we should use Linux and uh, what is it and uh, why considering it an operating system is good for uh, uh, working on bioinformatics as well. So first of all, I'm gonna welcome you to this course by using terminal. So what is a terminal? And uh, I'm gonna get you through this as well. But let me first welcome you to our course. So I am going to create a node file for our uh, uh, students. So uh, welcome dot txt. After that, I'm going to edit a file which is welcome.txt and I'm gonna welcome all my students to this course for learning bash for bioinformatics. So now I'm going to save the file and uh, And after that, uh, I'm gonna show you how uh, where this file was created and uh, what it stores for us. So here is a welcome.txt. So it shows welcome all my students to this course for learning Bash for Bioinformatics. So how this was created, what, which, uh, what terminal was used, what is a terminal, all the things I'm going to get you through this course. So let's continue our first slide for today Linux so our plan for today is what is Linux how to use a shell navigating the file system working with the files running programs and file permission using the bash and shell system so what is Linux just another operating system just like Windows Linux is open source Linux is also a variant of Unix so as Mac OS so much for this tutorial applies to the Mac as well. So if you're using Mac, this is a similar operating system you are familiar with. Why Linux? So Linux is free. It's fully customizable. It's stable. It almost never crash. But people are used to Windows slash Mac. So why should they bother using the Linux operating system? So when working with the sequencing data, you don't really have another choice. It is possible to handle extremely large file without any problems. Most of the software is developed and optimized for Linux operating system. And it is easy to run programs on remote machine using the Linux server as well. So that's why you should go for Linux operating system. So there are several ways to use Linux. For example, Mac OS, you can use the Linux operating system on Mac as well. Windows 10, if you want to use uh, on Windows, you can also do that by installing the subsystem in your environment. I will also include a lecture on that, how to install Windows subsystem. Or you can buy a second-hand laptop and install Linux on it because it requires most less uh, kind of... Uh, uh, memory and uh, it requires small RAM and uh, you don't have to worry about the specs. So GUI versus shell. Windows focuses on graphical user interface. You can 
do the uh, things by touching on it for example when we created a welcome note i used a command called touch so in the windows operating system you can just right click and go to create a new text file and then you can type all the things that i wrote using the shell system so linux focuses on command line interface gui is just a add on on linux operating system but now it is very much good if you are using linux operating system it is fully enjoyable and very okay to work with as well gui and cli so gui versus shell you show the hidden files in operating system you can just type in this command that you are seeing here it is also interactive so but if you want to do this on windows you have to unhide the files but on a linux operating system you can do this by using a terminal for example if we say we want to use this command if you can see it on the screen i'm gonna type ls a slash downloads if we can see there are down so here you can see there are these are the files i'm gonna repeat this so these are two files that were hidden but when i type in this command it is not it is showing us the hidden files as well but if you go to the download folder you will not see any two dot things so that's why the gui is a powerful operating system that you can use so what exactly is a shell so shell interprets command that user type and manages their execution for example when we type touch dot welcome dot txt it created a file without asking any permission and it manages their execution so the shell communicates with internal part of the operating system called kernel the most popular shells are tch chs corn and bash bash is used in ubuntu operating system and linux operating system so different are most times about for this tutorial we are going with bash because i'm using ubuntu so shell commands are also case sensitive for example if you typed where it should be a, a smaller a alphabet and you used a, a larger alf alphabet it should it will not uh, complete its uh, uh, execution for example if i can show you here on the terminal let's move on to the download repository so downloads is download the capital word is d and i will click now i am in the download section if i move back and uh, i try cd down loads so there are no such file or uh, directory in this system so it is not catching the download file because it's case sensitive language so if we move to the connecting a linux or unix operating system you can open up a terminal after that you can connect using the prompt and things like that so i'm gonna show you on my linux operating system so here you can see as well philip at the rate newton so biodata nerd at the rate biodata nerd so here is the username that is provided here is the host because i am using it on a local computer so in not connected to any server it is showing my name as well biodata nerd biodata nerd so at the rate default string is uh, my main location where the server is uh, ported on and here you can see the current directory so i am not in any current directory i am in the home folder so if i move to the downloads here is my current directory which is download and here is the prompt the smaller circle that is blinking it's prompt so we will continue our lecture executing a command so for executing a command you need a command name its options that are called flags and its argument so for example if we combine the options for example i will go to uh, show you the files that are here so if we type ls you can see there are files that are presented in the downloads but if we move to 
ls dash lah you can see these are stored by the uh, uh, date and when in the file was saved when the file was created its uh, directory as well so that's how a command work in a bash system so there are also long options as well for example if we see ls is uh, one l all human readable so it's a human readable file that we executed terminating a running command on linux operating system so you can also terminate a running command that you are running in your terminal for example if you open up our terminal and let's say we are running a command sudo apt update and uh, we want to cancel this command we're just going to press ctrl c and it gonna terminate the running command that is running on our operating system so that's way you can also cancel any kind of command that you want for example if we open up a wrong file let's just say i move on to my download repository so about that downloads and here if i open up a let me just go back and uh, let's see where is that repository i'm just gonna look for it there in yes it is present in the download cd down loads and uh, it is available in the rx icon so there are some genome files that are uh, not completely stimulated and uh, i want to run those files to check if they are uh, completed by now so i'm just gonna click here and uh, and I in no such file. So let's check army 00m9n. So here you can see it is also giving me the sound of the error, and these files are not completely generated. So I'm just gonna cancel the command by Control C. So the, in this way, you can terminate a command if you have opened a wrong file in the terminal. So there are hand, endless number of program and commands and parameters. So, but you will never walk alone in Linux operating system. Whenever you need help with a command, just type slash edge or slash help as a parameter or type the main and the command name or ask Google, it will show you. So let's just say we want to work with sudo. So we don't know what sudo is. So we will write help and it will show us sudo h. Sorry about that. So it's a, all the information that you need. sudo execute a command as another user. Use it sudo edge. These kind of things. There are options here. Minus a, ak, pass, background, pell, c directory. So all the things, all the help you need you can get by for example cat is a command and we want to see what it does so share with no file you can use the cat file to read the file so all you can do is type help and you will get the parameters you when you will never walk alone in the linux operating system you can always ask for help from google as well so here there is a command that is shown main echo echo is a command that we, we use so what is, why it is used we can type this to see so here you can see echo displays a line of a text and we will just cancel this or press Q to quit. So in this way you can get help in the Linux operating system. And uh, here you can see all the uh, help that is uh, shown here. 
I I always uh, showed I recently showed you on the terminal terminal as well. So let's see echo hello world and it will shows us the command that we entered on the line as well. So Unix and Linux file system. Note Unix file names are case sensitive as I already showed you and it begin with your terminal operator and then there is bin extra home user home can contain many of the profiles that you created i have created one from while which is biodata nerd and i also got one user which is biodata nerd so you can create two or more files on the linux operating system and here you will show the path as slash and slash john slash portfolio which folder you want to go in for example, if we come back to our home directory here, home, and search for the files, there is one profile called Biodata Nerd, and we will enter to Biodata Nerd. After that, we will enter to Downloads. Downloads. And uh, let's just say we want to enter another folder in the Downloads, which is uh, rest set rna double zero so we will say there we will paste its name and uh, they will cd sorry i didn't write the download and here you can see we are directly in the refsec folder and uh, this is how you can work on the linux operating system so the File names are also case sensitive. Just like I told uh, downloads with a smaller capital, it didn't, it gives us the error. And when I typed in with the capital letter, then it takes us to the directory. So you have to give the absolute path. You can also check for the relative path, but there are some shortcuts. For example, if you want to go to parent directory, you can use the double dot. You can go to home directory by using this call and last directory by using the smaller there are also wildcard zero or more character and exactly one character use the tab completion and avoid spaces in the name file so if you use space then it will be not uh, uh, will not open and uh, use our tab completion how to use tab completion for example we just uh, move to our parent directory and let's close this so let's just say we want to move to bioinfo notebook i'm just gonna type cd and c it all uh, and i will press the tab button and it will automatically take the node and will take me to the bioinfo notebook library and uh, in this way you can use the tab system so in the next lecture we will be looking at the mm, some of the commands that we use in the linux operating system and after that, we are going to continue our session on the bioinformatics uh, lectures and how to use the bioinformatics uh, by using the shell. And that's it for this lecture.